Welcome to Tinks Invest. We talk about investing, finance, and professional development. That's the recording time of 7:26 a.m. on Eastern Time. Ethereum coin trading two thousand four hundred twenty-seven dollars. That about zero point five three percent so far. As you can see clearly on the overall market, is a mixed bag at the moment. The key coins are relatively flat at the moment, with some selective altcoins surging more prominently than others. As you can see clearly on the left side of the chart, Solana is currently up about twelve point three four percent. XRP up about approximately seven point five percent. Polkadot up about fourteen percent, while Algorand is also up about seven percent respectively. And on the equity side of the house, you can see that clearly our Dow Jones is currently down about zero point seven six percent, and Nasdaq up about zero point six three percent, while S and P is still down about one point three two percent. And the stir that we're seeing right now is a mixed bag between. Uh, a battle between the bears and the bulls, obviously.、Um, as we know, last week was a crazy, crazy week.、Um, one of the craziest I've ever seen. And even though I was on vacation, it was.、Uh, it seems like everything was like falling apart.、Uh, I don't know if there is any correlation to、uh, the YouTube videos that I put out on a daily basis or the Patreon updates that I put out on a daily basis. But it seems like there's some correlation. It seems like when I was away, like everything start to blow up in out of proportion. So just a a weird、um, coincidence.、Um, not that I had anything to do with it, which obviously.、Um, but you know, let's just、um, focus on what's you know within our control. You know, based on the risk management level, what are the things that we need to look out for? So the closest one today、uh, would be you know. The Fed meeting that will be durating from today all the way to tomorrow, and、uh, I believe the timing of the meeting, based on what I see on the website, sometimes around like two p.m. on the Eastern time,、um, and based on what I、uh, have read on the media front so far this morning, there's a lot of、um, I guess、uh, hypothesis,、um, and obviously you know some insights from economists on you know aligning. Um, you know what Jerome is going to be saying. What are some of the expectations? You know、um, that we should technically, you know, foresee that he'll be talking about. Obviously, the topic is going to be cultivated around like the job numbers, the quantitative tapering, the interest rate hikes. What are the timing for it? How has the COVID aid support、um, been alleviating the domestic front?、Um, is there any hindrance、uh, in a short-term perspective? And the overall collective、um, economical outlook, you know, going forward, right? And the high-level verbiage that I've, you know, collected from a group of these、uh, economists from J.P. Morgan, Goldman Sachs, as of their、uh, verbiage that I that I read on my Bloomberg terminal in front of me this morning, is that、um, you know the collective、um, insight or the expectations on Wall Street is that the interest cycle is going to be. Uh, some starting sometimes around as soon as March, which is basically you know approximately a month and a half, two months from now, and、uh, this will be one of the first ones, and then the ses the second one is gonna, I guess, allocate it based on various different banks around like June, basically summertime, and then another one's gonna be September, right? So it's kind of like a quarterly basis type of cadence. And then the last one is not going to be December, but but it's going to be November. So collectively, Wall Street expects four interest hikes, and、uh, some banks, including even Goldman Sachs, they said, you know, this is more of a assumption at the moment, right? And、um, then this is more of a base case assumption. Um, on the more I guess worst case. You know, scenario perspective, they foresee that it's possible for us to even see five to six interest hikes、um, in 2022. So it seems like you know we're like kind of progressively increasing the interest hikes. It started from three, from the you know two FOMC meetings ago, to now four, right? Based on the Wall Street expectation, to now five to six, right? So it seems like、um, you know the Fed are. You know, putting their、um, head-on focus on fighting, you know, the necessary steps to go against inflationary pressure.、Um, and I think today、um, we already have been baking in most of the adjustments into the market dynamics already. I think most of the people have been 
And, you know, the one of the reasons why we're seeing this uncertainty and panic mode is that in addition to like the crypto ban news that we see from Russia to the Ukraine-Russian potential breakout of a war to in UK with respect to Boris Johnson on his scandal uh, partying in Downing Street office uh, during the pandemic, obviously, um, to the tech earnings uh, on missing their uh, earnings results from Q4, but also the negative economic outlook collectively drive the stir, right? So I think today, um, if we are going to be in alignment with Wall Street expectation, we should technically see a green day. Um, but ultimately, I do not, I'm not a wizard. Again, right? I do not control the market, even though you might think so. I, I'm not a wizard. Um, I, I think that's what's going to be playing out tomorrow. And this is something that we've seen last time. The last FOMC, FOMC meeting, despite it was a negative one, right, depicting that's going to be four interest rate hikes, um, is still glided to a positive side of the spectrum at the end of the day, right? So I think if you think long term, um, these are no-brainers levels for us to incur risk. Um, and that's what I'm going to plan, plan on be doing, right? Just holding for a long term, uh, ride out this wave and eventually come out on top. And I think we are in terms of like the market cycle, we might be in like the, the capitulation stage to like the completely depression stage already. Um, so we might be a little bit elongated going forward, but you know, we're pretty much near the bottom, I would say mostly, you know, and with respect to Ethereum has already been crashing, you know, basically from, I would say, 80 to 75% from all-time high already, and crashing even further, low, you know, to a lower level, like, let's say, below 2,000, would not be the most logical level anymore. You know what I'm trying to say? So that's pretty much on the recap. Let me just look into the news before I go straight into the technical analysis. Um, I'll say collectively, not really, uh, but I, I did watch something that was really embarrassing last night. It's with respect to uh, Boris Johnson. So I watched a YouTube video around like him just being grilled at the parliament. It seems like uh, in like an um, auditorium, like just a team of political officials in the government just laughed at him, like being very condescending towards him, like calling him like incompetent. Um, I mean, it is... Uh, it is unfortunate that, you know, as a prime minister um, of UK, you know, partying <laughs> during pandemic and getting caught, um, especially with his seniority, with his experience, um, with his, I guess, reputation so far, this is going to be a huge dent, a huge detriment to him, uh, to his political career going forward. So I, I feel sorry for him, but uh, he's human too, right? So I give him some slacks, but anyways, that's off topic now so let's just dive straight into the technical analysis with respect to recording time of 7 34 a.m on the eastern time if i'm going to try two thousand four hundred thirty five dollars about 0.27 percent you can see clearly yesterday we were experiencing you know re relatively large volatility but subsequently rebounded from the 2150 which is a level of identification in the substantive level right and right now what we're trying to get to is going to go back up to the 2450 which is basically we're like $20 away. Uh, but the real level that we need to get up to is basically 2,625. So that's the next level and that's up to 2,850. You can see that's a relatively large gap, right? So if we are able to get above that and keep going, that means the reversal is confirmed. So we have to keep an eye out on it. And again, I do foresee today is going to be, or tomorrow, um, I, I think as we anticipate towards the beginning of the meeting, uh, we might see some volatility, but I think net net it should be positive overall, unless Jerome say anything crazy, obviously, right? But I don't think the Fed is gonna do that. They are gonna be, you know, extra sensitive on the fact that the market has been relatively sensitive, right? So with respect to Bitcoin, uh, we bounced from the thirty three, basically thirty two nine four six earlier, and right now where we're trying to go to is basically above three seven five hundred. And you could see that comparable to Ethereum, we have a large gap, right? And you could see recuperate a lot of the loss from yesterday from the 20 out of 70. So congrats to anyone that bought in when we were in huge panic mode. And exactly the time was around like 11.30 a.m., 11.45 a.m. on Eastern time yesterday. 
With respect to Dogecoin at 1411 right now, uh, at the moment, anywhere from current level to the bottom at the 12 cents is still good, but right now it's the, at the upper echelon of oversold. So it's a relative exercise at the moment. Um, I probably wouldn't touch this. I would probably just incur more risk around Bitcoin and Ethereum, which are the bread and butter of my portfolio. Cardano is down about 3.5%, uh, with trading above $1, anywhere from current level to 92 are still good level, but we still like the, at the upper echelon of oversold 38 out of 70, so not the most ideal. Again, right, better opportunity in Bitcoin and Ethereum at the moment. Solana is up about 12%. Amazing. We bounced from the 80. You can see that was a double bounce. Uh, the 23 out of 70, so still oversold. So right now, what we're trying to get up to is um, we're just hovering around the 90 because it's an easy number. But we need to get above to 100, which is the first level of non-substantive consolidated level. But the real level is 112, right? So I think if the market confirms, um, we should technically reverse up there. And I think I like Solana overall if I'm going to choose out of all the altcoin. I think Solana is a good hedge if you invest into Ethereum, obviously. XRP is up about 8.23%. Uh, bounce from the 57, you can see a triple bounce. Nice. Which, which is good it means that this is a rock bottom rock bottom 55 cents right and you can see that when we were at 55 cents days ago it was at the 22 out of 70 right now we are at the 28 so still oversold but it's more relative at the moment so xrp incurring risk right now not terrible if you are if you believe in the long term look at it's about 14 percent as well see the altcoins are wow wow rest like just searching so so nicely right now uh, 30 out of 70, so obviously anywhere from current level to the 1850 would be a good level. Our grants up about 8%. Um, at the 27 out of 70, so currently anywhere from current level to the 79 or the 80 is still a good level. <clears throat> Shiba Inu is at the 38 out of 70. Um, anywhere from current level, I think I like low 2000s to 1400 to 900 from here. <clears throat> I think I'm losing my voice for some reason. MacTech, um, 147. So I like anywhere from 143 to 120 from here. 29 out of 70. Um, there's no signs of reversal yet, but if you believe in this long term, I think anywhere from the 145 to 120, it's logical. AVAX up about 2%. Anywhere from 59 to 50 is still good. Right now it's at the 40, 64. So basically levitating above the 60. But if you know technical, you know that 59 to 50 is the logical level to incur risk. Luna is down about 0.5%, anywhere from 62, 52, 45 from here, based on the technicals. And then with respect to risk management level, these are the levels that are updated as of this morning. You could see that I update this on a daily basis. In addition to the list of, I think, 12 here, I also have 100 plus of crypto and stocks that I update on a daily basis on Patreon. So let me know how it goes today. Um, again, if you hold long term, you'll be fine. Short term volatility shouldn't shake you, nor should that be the reason to shake you anyways, right? I think we are doing our best to, you know, get back onto the horse, try to come back into a normalized economy back in the day before the whole COVID situation happened. Um, but um, these are the maneuvers that we have to go through. It's not the easiest one, but uh, eventually we'll get through to the top. So hopefully this is helpful. Really appreciate you on this Tuesday morning and have a good day. Take care. Bye.